Hi everybody, it's Lace, and uh, this video is going to cover um, lot permissions, item permissions, and all the new functionality that was introduced as of uh, R31, I believe it was. The first thing you're going to look at is, I'm going to hit the asterisk key on my numpad, the star slash asterisk key, and that's going to bring up some default lot permissions, and I've kind of set these uh, to a certain way just to demonstrate some things. Um, going over this, when to apply settings, we're going to cover that in a second, but make items private, not private. Um, that's basically going to allow people to like, use your crafting tables. I'm going to say not private. This is my POT, and I want everybody to be able to, that lives here to be able to use this area. Remove or modify items. Uh, yeah, no, that's going to be a co-owner because I don't want people moving things around. Um, container, add item. Well, Kindred, that's fine. They can add items to containers. Uh, modify or remove. Uh, I'm probably going to set this right now for co-owner. It might later go to a trustee, somebody that, you know, let's say is in your guild or something. You might give them trustee access to being able to do these things. And then listing things on a vendor. I'm going to leave that at Kindred. That's fine. People can list things. You know, makes the vendor more attractive, the more people that are listing various items. So I'm good with that. Um, and again, I'm designing this particular lot uh, as a, quote, community lot. Um, if it's your own private home, you may want to say, no, you can't, you know, you know, you can say Kindred, but never give Kindred access to anybody or above. Uh, modify or remove, well, co-owner, nobody else is going to do that unless you give them that co-owner status. Um, modify or remove again. So this could apply, I guess it could apply also to a private lot. Uh, you could, might say, um, let's say it's a launch and you pay $10,000 for Lord of the Manor and you've got all these crafting stations and you don't want anybody to use them. Well, there you go. Nobody can use your stuff. Up to you. Oh, sorry. I'm trying to get this back to not private. Now, when to apply settings. This is important and I just learned this this past weekend. If you put this on moving or placing items these defaults will go into place every time you drag and move something right so if i pretended let's see Connor, let's let's pretend i just said i was going to allow trustees to do this and let's pretend i said i was going to allow trustees to do this okay so trustees can remove or modify an item trustees can modify or remove container items now if i'd gone to this container over here and it's got some permissions on it but we'll just set them differently so now I've said it's only a co-owner and I said the only people that can touch it's a co-owner and basically I've said nobody this is my box nobody else can use it okay so I've set all these permissions and if I move this item and I mean just moving an inch when I look at it now it's set to trustee trustee if I look back at my asterisk key you see where I've put this to trustee, trustee. So the default for the lot applied to this item when I moved it. So you probably don't want to do that. You're probably going to want to put this at placing new items. So we've got this at trustee, trustee. That's fine. I'm just going to demo this. So I'm going to say uh, Kindred can use it. I'm going to say Kindred can do that. Uh, I'm going to say public can add item. And when I move it this time, and then look at it. We're going to see, oh, Kindred, Kindred Public. Okay, those were lower values. Maybe I messed that up. Oh, I did mess that up because I did have this on placing new items. Oops, let's move it back to move, moving or placing. Okay, so we've got trustee, trustee are the defaults. If I look at this, it's at Kindred, Kindred, Public. And then if I move it and I look at it, now it's back bumped up. So I hope that makes that distinction. You probably are going to want to, when you go into the asterisk, thing, asterisk key, these are when you want to place items. These are default permissions that basically lock people out. You know, if I set this to co-owner, and this is probably how I'm going to do mine, is I'm going to set these to co-owner, co-owner, adds fine, uh, that's fine with me, and that's fine with me. So that's my default settings. Um, so if I went to this container, and I put this to Kindred, and that's at Kindred, and I put that to Public. And now when I move the container and I look at it again, it's still on the same settings that I had, which are lower than when I hit the asterisk key and made them all very restrictive. 
So in other words, I can do all my deco. It's very restrictive on who can use what. Then I can go and set the individual permissions on, on the items to allow, you know, kindred people can do this and, and trustees can go in this box and co-owners can go in this box or something like that. Um, if you're wanting to share mats between a guild, you know, you're probably not going to let everybody just have a free for all until they get earn your respect and, and stuff. And so you'd set that to trustee. And then as you've earned that rank, quote unquote, in your guild, now you have access to these things. So it's a way just to protect uh, landowners, allow them to be able to share things, but also protect uh, what they're sharing. So again, it's very important that you set these permissions, these default permissions up, and I would do it when placing new items so you don't have to go back and readdress everything you've set. Um, this is huge, placing new items, default permissions. If you do it the other way, you're constantly going to have to go back and, and fix things. We've talked about kindred and trustee and stuff, and I guess the thing to, to point out is how do you how do you determine who is a trustee or a co-owner or a kindred of your particular lot? Now, this is individually set by lot. Those other permissions are going to apply to all your lots because um, I don't see one that you know says lot A has these permissions, lot B. So I have to assume that those are you know worldwide encompassing. However, on an individual lot, you can assign that particular um, value based on you know so lot a i could say these five people can use it lot b these five people can use it and they're completely different people um that's going to be done um by this the, the stone um some places have like a little hanging sign in front of them but it's how you do all your uh permissions and stuff for your for your particular piece of land so i'm going to pretend that this lot i just just claimed it and nobody has permissions I'm going to go into private residence and it's going to say I own this lot. Um, so I'm going to click on that and you can just go to manage lot access. Here's where I can add my friends to it. Um, if you mark it as a guild chapter house, just like you see all guild members and, and I am a guild leader. So all members of my guild, or even if I wasn't a guild uh, leader, everybody in my guild would have be considered kindred, just like it says. Uh, guild officers will be trustees. The permissions list will override any guild permissions. Um, and the permissions list is exactly what we talked about, hitting the, the star key to bring up uh, those default permissions, or then if I set them on the individual item. Locked doors, you know, uh, if, if the door's locked, people can't get in, period, um, if they don't have that kind of access. And then here we go, guests. Guests can open doors. But you have to specifically sign them that role. Kindred, you can see what the base permissions are for these roles. Again, you've already set that on your lot. If I escape out of this, you've already set that on, on your lot this way. But there's lots of combinations you can do for this. To add somebody, I have a second account. It's just Lace. And I'm going to say Lace, add her permissions. Her default is guest. But I want Lace to be able to do some stuff so I can raise her permissions. Now she's kindred, so anything with kindred level access, now she can access. If I raise it again, she's a trustee, and I'll raise her to a co-owner. Well, let's say Lace pissed me off, and or she left my, you know, she's not my friend, maybe I had her separately from my guild or something, and she's pissed me off. <laughs> well, I can just keep lowering her permissions until I finally remove her from my lot. So if somebody pisses you off, there you go. You also have band, where I can say, Lace has totally pissed me off. She is not coming on this lot. Boom. Lace cannot go to this lot. Again, to remove her, um, I would hit remove. And, and now she can get back on the lot. Poor Lace. She's getting picked on. Anyway, um, I'm going to just set her back up. And again, it's that simple to raise and lower permissions. And those permissions directly tie in to this of what she can do there and then if I go and look at individual components these rankings or you know chair there we go so now I've clicked on it again this was item permission kindred well I'm gonna put that to well it's fine because actually there's nobody called kindred here but uh, kindred could remove it trustee if I put it to co-owner 
and if I put this again to co-owner, I'm basically locking down this box that nobody can touch it, nobody can, you know, and one thing when you say add item public, one thing to be aware of is you could have a box and just, you know, box of crap, and you might let that be public, but you might want to then take those items out, sort them, and put them in the appropriate box, but you could have, you know, box box of crap because people might just throw in rotten tomatoes and god knows what um anyway that kind of goes over that next thing to cover is uh your crafting tables like i've set this up as a you know community crafting area you don't have to live here to use it uh because why because when i hit star i've said my items are not private so that means anybody can come use these things on my land now if i Maybe I hate carpenters. I don't know. Oh, why do birds? So, oh, no, not the carpenters, but carpenters. So if I go to the crafting station and I say, to use my crafting station, you must be a kindred. I must know you because maybe I'm a carpenter and I don't want you to compete with me. So you can't use my station. You know, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if people would really do this, but there, it may happen. I can make item private and nobody can use it. Or I can do it by permissions um, so I don't want that to be lit how do I unlike that I guess that's a good question let me figure this one out because I've just now posed a question how do I get it off of uh, kindred because I don't want to make it private let's see ah there we go change to non-private but kindred still lit up but I'm not seeing how to unlight up kindred so now I think I've just locked everybody out I guess what I can do, since if I go into star, and I'm just figuring this out now, I can say placing new items, not private. So let's see if this works. I'm going to say, and drag this into my inventory, and what was that, carpentry? There's our table. We're just going to stick it back, may not be placed well. Let's see what happens with the permissions. Ah, co-owner. Why? Because if I go to star, remove or modify item, placing new items, container. Hmm, I'm confused. Let me figure this out and I'll get right back with you. Well, I spent a bunch of time changing the permissions on the bench, changing the star default permissions. You can see I've moved them all around. I've made things private. I've picked this bench up. I've set it down. I've logged in and out. I've abused poor Lace. I kicked her completely off the lot where she had no permissions. And she could still double click this and bring up the interface. Now, the only thing that I didn't test was could she actually craft something now her recipe book came up and all that but she didn't really have the mats to do anything because i've hoarded them all um <laughs> that's the only part i haven't tested so i don't know if it's it gives you the idea that somebody can still access the table and it gives them the idea that they can but they can't actually craft i'm not sure where the limitations being set and again i don't know how to get this from i've changed it to um, this would be your private item so it's set it private Changing it to non-private, and then again, changing the item to private. I mean, I changed it to private. I changed the the permissions here that anytime I placed or moved things that they were private, I picked it up, I put it down, um, I raised her permissions, lowered her permissions, and went through a bunch of iterations, and I can't find how to lock her out of my table. Um, I imagine it's there. I just can't find the, the, based on the description of the items that I'm trying to turn off and on and set the permissions for I can't really find a way to lock somebody out of my table other than if I'd hit locked doors and this was inside a house with a locked door obviously if they can't get in the locked door they can't get to the table um, but because they've put so much you know granularity into how you can set all the permissions it I'm just not seeing it go to the crafting table specifically based on what I could have here and then my second problem is I can say item permissions, this, this, and this, but where can I say item permissions, none, you know? And I mean, I had her at guess. She wasn't even kindred, and she could still get on that table. So maybe there's some more stuff going on with this that needs to be polished. 
Um, I'm not seeing this really work with the crafting tables. It works fine for the boxes, but I'm not seeing it work for the crafting tables. Um, I think I've spent enough time on that. Uh, I imagine it'll come at some point where you could lock down your stations, you know, because you're just selfish and don't want anybody else to use your stations, you know. But um, me, I'm not going to be doing this, so I don't really care. I was just trying to show it. <laughs> come use my crafting stations all you want. Not a problem here. One last craft or one last uh, permission thing to mention. There's these things called public caches, and they are just that. Anybody can take or put in. Uh, there's not really permissions on them. I guess you could make a public cache, but it, then it would just be really a basic chest. The point of a, a public cache is to allow people to take stuff out of it. Um, since now we can set the, the permissions on individual chests, uh, really having this doesn't really matter because to me a public cache means it's a free-for-all and if I want to set permissions it'll be on one of these. I guess the only difference is if I want my chest to look like this and behave like that I can now um, but to me I would like to know that you know when I see this particular type item I know it's a public chest. I also know that this is under the hospitaler symbol and you're going to find hospitaler caches around the world where you might see the symbol somewhere and there might be a, a public chest or a chest that they've set permissions to, to where people can you know th these are things that they can get um, like I know I threw in some just some cheap you know bear hats and stuff for free for folks um, I think one of my residents put in some things some repair kits and stuff like that that they donated and it was just some stuff that players can use um, of course, don't be greedy if there's 20 things in there. Don't take all 20 and then go resell them because we will have a log because I don't know if you saw that. We'd see uh, view log and we'd see who took the items and stuff. And then what can we do? We can go to the lot and ban you. So don't do things like that. There are some safeguards in place. Doesn't mean you won't get away with it, but you know, you don't want to be that guy. Oh, also, um, this has kind of been debated on the forums a little bit, but apparently um, when you pick your last name, that thing's stuck with you for life. So if you think about going and stealing everything from a public cache and my name is, I'm a big jerk, um, and my last name is Ha Ha Ha, uh, well, guess what? Your next character is going to be whatever you call it, Ha 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 Ha, and we're going to know the Ha 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 guy <laughs> is a douche. <laughs> so that's another way for people to identify uh, people misbehaving. Um, again, people have said, well, I don't want to have the same last name for all characters. But Lord British is pretty adamant about their uh, a, an account and any extra characters you have on that account are all tied together. You are responsible for your own actions. You don't get to hide behind changing your name, deleting characters and all that. Um, so just keep that in mind, too. I think that's going to conclude this tutorial. It should give you a pretty good idea of how to set permissions, some things to avoid and stuff, other than my fumbling on trying to figure out how to lock down a particular crafting station from other people using it. I will uh, do a shout out to the forums and see if anybody can maybe guide me on how to correctly do it, or maybe nobody's really tried to do it because most people are like, well, you can use my crafting stations. It's not a big deal and, and things like that. Um, so take care. Happy hunting and be safe.